Hey YouTube, welcome back to my data structures and TypeScript series. In this video, we're going to go over the implementation for the queue data structure. So here I have the queue class, which takes in the generic T, and it's implementing the iterable interface for JavaScript iterators. Here we're going to store a private variable called list, which is a linked list, and then we're going to pass in our T generic variable, type variable, and in the constructor, we're going to take an equals function, which is an optional function that clients must provide if their if the t value of the queue is not primitive. So they're using complex objects because we're going to need to use the equals. We're going to need to know if two t's are equal. We're going to need to know that because we have to use that in, in a few of our methods. So if they are using objects that are not primitive and more complex, then they have to provide this equals function. Otherwise, and then we, we initialize the linked list with that equals function. And otherwise, we're just going to create a linked list without the without the equals function. And the linked list will use its own default comparator, which is just the triple equal signs for JavaScript. So the first set of methods we have are our niceties. And this is the size method, which returns the size of the queue and it returns the number. And this is a constant time operation. So we're just going to return this dot list dot size. Very simple. Is empty, is self explanatory, returns true if the queue is empty, and false otherwise. And this is constant as well because the list op method is, is constant. And clear just removes the list, deletes all elements in the queue. So for this, we're just going to call this dot list dot clear. As you can see, we're heavily leveraging the linked list methods, and this is why the linked list class and video took a while because most of the functionality is baked under there. The stack and queue are really just wrappers around the linked list with invariants that limit where you can insert and remove, which is the front and back. So the next set of methods we have is insertion and deletion. These are your bread and butter for the queues in queue and DQ. In queue inserts an element to the back of the queue. I'm going to update that description. And that's going to be a constant time operation. And it's going to take an element element with type T. And it's not going to return anything. It's just going to enqueue the element. And what this is going to do is simply just take the list and add it to the back. And that's going to be element, not T. And likewise, DQ element from the front of the queue. This is going to be a constant time operation because all we're going to do is call this dot list dot remove front. And we're going to return it because DQ expects the return type of T. Then we have our accessing accessing methods, peak front and peak back, which are self-explanatory. We're just looking to see, looking looking at the values of the nodes at the front and back. And then we're just going to return, since our list has the same methods, we're just going to delegate those calls to the list. Nice and simple. And then contains is going to just call this dot list dot contains. This method returns true if the element is in the queue. Otherwise, it's going to return false. And this is a linear operation because we have to search through the entire list. And then the iterator is just for JavaScript. And the JavaScript iterator protocol needs Objects that need to be iterated, that need to be iterable, need to implement the symbol.iterator method, which returns an iterator. And this is just going to delegate the call to this dot list symbol.iterator. And then we're going to call it to return the iterator itself. And that's it. So there you have it. That's the implementation of the queue. And in the next video, we're going to go over a very exciting data structure, which is called priority queues. So I'll see you then.